just so you know. Oh, I just, That's... she just popped up. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Okay. There we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first virtual PTA meeting of the year. Um, before we, I, like I said, I want to welcome everybody, but before we get started, um, if you could just do a call to order and then a flag salute, I pointed out a flag for us. <laughs> so if you can get started, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United of, America States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, well, if for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jocelyn Waga. I am president of the PTA. Um, just a little bit of background. I actually went to Woodrow Wilson uh, many, many years ago when it was still a junior high. Um, but it, it's still like the building is the same for me. It's, it's actually still the same. It's still such a wonderful place to be. That's why I'm really glad to my children have been part of it. And like these are actually a little sad also because my children are my twins are actually this, these are my last kids. I'm not going to have any more kids who <laughs> basically come through this school. But it is really just such a great school to be in. And I'm glad to be a part of BTA and just really like give back to the school and to the students and to the parents in any way I can. Um, and then that note, I was, I don't think uh, Mrs. Blevins that uh, any other um, officers have joined yet. Not yet. Okay. Well, you know, hopefully they'll join, but there's a, three other people with me. There's Girish Warrior. He's our VP. Um, uh, Ming Yam. And she's our, actually she's another VP. And then there's Sophia Lipman, who is also, who's a treasurer. But, you know, hopefully they'll come in and they'll be able to introduce themselves. And I have like the gender items for them to speak on, but if not, I can speak as, as well. Um, on that note, uh, just running through the agenda, uh, Mrs. Blevins, if you'd like to just speak on the administrator's report. Sure, no problem. So I'm gonna share my screen. Give me one second, because I wanted to share something with all of you. Okay, hopefully you can see this. Um, yes. This is something new at Woodrow Wilson. I'm really proud of the document that we have in front of us here. Uh, what we did last year during the pandemic and while we were remote, uh, the teachers were able to coordinate together and contribute to a vision statement. So at the top of this infographic, you see the vision statement that our staff contributed to and came up with. At Woodrow Wilson Middle School, we believe in a diverse and inclusive community committed to empowering all students to be open-minded, value the process of learning, demonstrate resilience, display empathy, and build the confidence necessary to reach their highest potential. And then with the help of the PTA last year, we were able to get a local artist, Dan Koval, to paint our vision statement across our lobby. So as you enter our school, you will now see this statement loud and proud. And again, it's a vision statement. So it's one to live up to and one to constantly remind ourselves on how we can do better at Woodrow Wilson. And below it, what you will see are student core values. Last year, again, while we were remote and then while we were hybrid, I had a group of students, sixth, seventh and eighth graders who were nominated by their teachers to have a principal's advisory committee. And this group met once a week to develop core values that were student-centered, that lived up to what they expected themselves and their peers to be at Woodrow Wilson. So what you see in front of you is choose kindness, always shine bright, lead with integrity, never give up, and reach for the stars. And if you notice the letters in teal, they spell out challengers. And one of the sayings at Woodrow Wilson is go challengers. And they say it uh, at the end of the challenger channel every week. So the students try to tie in some of the things that we already had established in traditions at Woodrow Wilson and add student friendly language. And below it are explanations of what they were trying to achieve and what they would like our students to live up to. So I wanted to open with this tonight because it's something that we're really proud out of. We are, we have posters made, we're getting, uh, they came in, they will be displayed in all the classrooms, they're starting to go up around the school, but hopefully you will see this 
um, come home. And it also will help with conversations. When we have conversations in the classroom, when we have conversations in the school or in the home about what we expect our students or ourselves to live up to as members of the WWMS community. So I will stop my screen share. Okay, to continue with the rest of my report. I think, is it everyone, I'm off screen share, correct? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so some other things to inform the PTA about some improvements that took place from last year to this year. Woodrow Wilson, the interior of Woodrow Wilson has really transformed itself since we went remote. Not only did the custodians paint almost every surface that they possibly could, uh, but we have a complete renovation of our library. We're still awaiting the furniture and bookshelves that were ordered. They're on a delay like most things in the United States. Uh, but if you go into the library, it's been painted, the floor has been done, the HVAC system is getting uh, renovated and we will have all new movable furniture and bookcases in there um, to enjoy this school year. Uh, we did get a new screen in the gym along with screen and tech equipment uh, and sound system within the cafeteria. We do have a dedicated uh, dance space which is also awaiting materials to come in, but we do have a dance instructor and she teaches three periods a day, which is something new at Woodrow Wilson. We do have cricket pitches, two of them installed in the backfield for our students, but also for residents and Edison to enjoy. Uh, the path in the back of the school was also moved and renovated. Um, along with some lockers, we're on a five-year locker renovation. Those of you, um, I know Ms. Wago, when you went to Woodrow Wilson, the lockers were still the same. Uh, but still slowly, the same. <laughs> still the same, but slowly but surely, we're going to be getting one hallway done at a time. In our front hallway, by guidance, you can see the new lockers that are going to be coming in. So we're really um, grateful for the facilities improvements and for the Board of Ed for approving the funding so that we can um, have 21st century facilities for our students. Um, some of the other things that I wanna talk about are um, the first few days of school. We had our learning leaders along with some other staff members plan a school-wide orientation. Most of our students have not been to Woodrow Wilson. Our eighth graders have only been students of Woodrow Wilson for about six months before the pandemic happened. So we knew coming into the school year that students would be tentative about entering the school for a variety of reasons, but they also probably were unfamiliar about what it would be like to be in a school again. So we decided to have a complete orientation, sixth, seventh and eighth grade. Uh, we did anything you would do as a sixth grader, we did with all of the grades to introduce them to Woodrow Wilson, the building, uh, the expectations, the procedures, et cetera. Uh, and our learning leaders uh, did a wonderful job planning that out for all of our teachers. We did have a picture day uh, last week. It was very successful. A lot of you uh, did purchase pictures. Again, I think it's something that parents haven't had a chance to purchase in about three years. So it looked like everyone was eager to get uh, pictures taken at school so that they could show them to their family and friends. But we also photographed the entire school so that we could give sixth, seventh, and eighth graders brand new IDs because some of them lost uh, their IDs and some of our eighth graders don't look like they did when they were sixth graders. So we wanted to make sure the entire school was photographed. If anyone happened to miss the two days that we did that, there will be a makeup day. So they will be able to get an updated ID. Back to school night was virtual this year from the hits that we had on our um, YouTube videos that were linked in and from our Google videos that were on the website. It seems that it was successful. Uh, parents definitely watch the videos at their leisure. Some of them in you know wee hours of the night and early in the morning when they were having their coffee, but it seemed to give them the flexibility and also allow for us to be safe uh, with COVID protocols. What we did do on back to school night though, is we had an open house for our sixth grade students. We weren't really sure how it was going to turn out. So we did limit it to sixth grade. We had over 200 families at the school over a four hour period. And the students were the parents tour guides. And for those of you who were able to experience that, 
it, it was excellent. I, I wanted to go on the tour with some of the sixth graders. They really owned the building. They were telling their parents about their lockers and how they walked in the hallway and all the rules. And they were showing Miss Machete's bulletin board that she had up in her classroom and what Miss <laughs> Machete used it for. Uh, so it was really a nice family event. And I think it's something that we definitely want to keep. Uh, you know, we learned some things in the pandemic, and this might be one of them. We will have a seventh and eighth grade open house sometime in October. I know some parents were interested in that. If you just joined us, if you could mute. Okay. Some of the other things coming up in October, we do have our clubs coming up. We will have a virtual club fair next week where students can sign up or join the clubs that they want. Um, that will, Clubs will start the week of October 11th. We will have a Halloween dance, that's in the works. So you will see some more information about that. I'm sure students will be able or, or want to go attend this dance. Um, we will have COVID protocols in place and we will plan it appropriately so that we have a max capacity that we can hold in the cafeteria. Uh, but you'll have more information soon. Week of Respect is coming up. So we have lessons planned um, across the district uh, that will be delivered uh, depending on content area. Our wingman program, we're happy to bring that back. Again, we just spoke to Ian Hockley. He's the founder of Wingman. For those of you who don't know what Wingman is, it is a social and emotional um, co-curricular uh, that really supports students uh, supporting one another. It's peer led, it's not led by adults and it encourages teamwork, team building um, and really uh, just peer connection within the school. So we will have some wingman events coming up in October for our whole school as we train our trainers to get ready to go into the classroom starting in November. Uh, if you can just mute, mute yourself if you just joined. Someone's not muting. Okay, moving along. Our Start Strong assessments, which are um, in place of the NJSLA test, are going to be October 18th for ELA, October 19th for math, October 20th for sixth grade science, and also makeups. This exam will be different than the exam that students took in the past. It will only be 60 minutes. There will only be one section for ELA, one section for math. It will not be a, a long test. And really the state wants to assess where our students are. Um, it's not a test you can study for. It will give us some baseline data after the pandemic to then adjust our teaching standards to what the students need. And the last thing that I want to talk about is a transportation report. I know transportation is one of the issues in the district. As you all know, the school buildings or schools themselves do not control the busing. Uh, we do not place students on buses, nor do we run our buses. Our buses in Edison with 17,000 students is run by our transportation department, right now being overseen by Rich Benedict. He's an interim supervisor as the supervisor hired to take over the transportation department will join us at the end of October. But to give you an update on the situation that we faced at Woodrow Wilson, as you know, Woodrow Wilson is a landlocked school. We have one way in and one way out. Typically in a normal year, we have 21 buses and three vans that transport students to Woodrow Wilson. Unfortunately, this year when we opened school, we were down 11 buses. Each bus holds 54 students. So you can do the math to add how many cars needed to come down onto Woodrow Wilson Drive. We were not made aware of this until right when school started. Um, in order to control the amount of traffic on Woodrow Wilson Drive, we did request police presence in the morning for one hour and in the afternoon for one hour. Uh, we were approved 
by uh, Dr. Bragan, thankfully, in uh, working with the chief of police to be able to provide for that. So that seems to be alleviating uh, some of the traffic backup on Plainfield and Woodrow Wilson Drive. Uh, we also have made improvements to the parent parking in the morning in terms of the drop off and parents have been wonderful, uh, making sure that they pull all the way up to let their students out so we can move that traffic. We do have extra personnel staff there as well, teachers as well as our security uh, personnel who are able to move that traffic. We did send out a map of alternative locations. You don't need to use the parent parking lot to drop off your child. There are some other uh, streets that we have a back path, which is off Woodbury, where you can drop your child off or some of the side streets and the children can walk into the school uh, in a safe way. Uh, we noticed that a lot more students are riding bikes to school, which is actually great for the environment and a great healthy choice for them. So we're really proud of those students who are riding those bikes. And again, they can do it safely with crosswalks or the path in the back of the school. Um, as of Monday, we were able to add three more buses into our rotation. So now we are still short seven buses. However, every student who requires by law to have a bus seat has one. So we are really thankful that our transportation department was able to work with the bus companies to get that up and running. However, we are still short. So we will still have traffic right now on Woodrow Wilson Drive. Um, hopefully we will continue to work with the transportation department. We know there's still some issues on some routes as there are new drivers, uh, sometimes the bus companies, the drivers are calling out and we're trying to cover them uh, through Board of Ed buses. But if there is an issue with transportation, please email me at the school so that I can stay on top of it. Again, we cannot communicate to the bus companies, so we don't have that authority, but we can pass on the information to our transportation department. So unfortunately, um, I... I'm not the one to have the answer for you, but we can definitely advocate for what the parents and students are experiencing. Um, and that ends my report. Great, thank you, Mrs. Blevins. Um, on that note, so uh, I just wanted to add, I think, you know, I mean, I, I had to actually, I'm one of the parents that was affected and I had to do the drop-offs and I think it actually, I was, a, kind of wary at first, but it actually worked out really well. It was not as bad as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate like everyone's efforts on that part. Mm -hmm. We're trying. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Okay, um, so the next thing on the agenda is uh, the teacher's report. Mrs. Kepard-Leon, hello, welcome back. <laughs> You're on mute. Okay, there you go. I have to present a little something. So let me share my great. screen. And let me see if I could find it. That would be great. You know, it's funny how we did this all year last year oh. and all of a sudden, uh, I don't see it. Let's see, hold on. So one of my little colleagues out there, desktop, I see, oh, my desktop, okay, no. Hold on one second. Let me get my little, what I wanna show. Good news from Woodrow Wilson Middle School. So how am I going to, hold on. This is really funny. Is this it? No. Maybe here. Let me see if I can show this here. Hold on. Now I see. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yay. Okay, in sixth grade English, Mrs. Colicchio uh, reports out that we just finished writing letters to our eighth grade self. We learned how to address an envelope properly too. Students are excited to receive these letters back before their promotion ceremony in eighth grade. So they're writing them in sixth grade and then they will get them at their promotion ceremony in eighth grade. We just stored them away. Some other skills we're working on in reading are learning about the many types of genres and active reading strategies. Students attended a Woodrow Wilson library orientation as well. So just so you know, all of the English classes actually um, were invited and 
Ms. Um, Tamara Richmond did a great job in doing a beautiful library orientation for all of the English classes at Woodrow Wilson. Mr. Campione would like to say the same thing that they also completed writing the letter to their future selves. So all the sixth graders did that, a letter intended again to be returned to them at the eighth grade as a remembrance of what they were like at the start of sixth grade. This has been a Woodrow Wilson tradition over the years and is a very highly anticipated part of the eighth grade celebration at the end of the year. In sixth grade social studies, Mrs. Yasko, Sadler, and Ms. Bagnoletti, they just finished a unit on math skills and world and US geography. We're moving into understanding history, what it is and how we learn about it using different sources. And next week we'll move into why people came to America. In math six, there's a few things. Uh, Ms. Machete, if you'd like to elaborate after I, they're working on ratios and ratio tables using modeling. And also in sixth grade pre-algebra, Ms. Machete said that they're working on translating and evaluating algebraic expressions using the order of operations. Is there anything else to add there? Ms. Um, so yeah, in math six, uh, this is part of our initial unit. And eventually we'll get into rates and unit rates um, and tying that to real world connections. And then in pre-algebra um, after this, this is start, this is still part of our first unit uh, on expressions and equations, but the first unit is very long. So um, we're at the very first piece of it, but all the kids are adjusting well. And uh, I think they're happy to do math on paper again, which is nice for us to see. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. In sixth grade science, they're finishing up a project in which students research possible careers in the field of earth science, which is the realm of science they will focus on this year. Soon they'll be starting um, the astronomy unit, studying earth and space, our solar system and galaxies. In seventh grade, um, Mrs. Caballero and I, we just reviewed literary terms, actually all of the seventh grade classes. Um, definitely did a review of literary terms just to refresh all of the kids' memories. Keep in mind, they were virtual for 15 months, most of them. So now they're, we're beginning to, sh um, to use show not tell descriptions in our writing. And in addition, we learned how to use dialogue in writing class in order to prepare to write our narrative, which is our first writing unit. In math seven, they're working on adding integers using modeling in a math workshop. In seventh grade science, Ms. Kamen reports out that they're focusing on the characteristics of living things. They're exploring the characteristics of fire and deciding if it's alive. Um, Mrs. Jabrona said that my seventh graders are finishing up some CER, which is using um, making a claim, using evidence and reasoning practice. Finally, they'll be moving to, onto their first lab pertaining to the concept of the characteristics of living things. In seventh grade social studies, this is Ms. Hurwitz. Um, actually, they're all doing the same thing, which would include Mrs. Um, blah, 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 blah. Mr. Pavis and Mrs. Montone. And let's see. So what they're doing, lessons on early humans. And today the kids actually did a scavenger hunt simulation on hunter-gatherers. And Mrs. Montone actually did a cave simulation where they went into this really, really dark closet and they were trying to act like the hunter-gatherers hunter back then, the early humans in these caves. Um, in eighth grade English, they're working on reviewing of story elements and active reading strategies. Um, Mrs. Mohammed shared that with us. We'll come back to Mrs. Brookenstein. She's gonna tell us about math. And in eighth grade science, they're learning, um, they're studying physical science, starting with the atom. They've reviewed the properties of atoms, ions, and isotopes. And soon they'll be starting to look at patterns in the periodic table of elements. And then I have something for the eighth grade parents. Mrs. Brookenstein, do you have anything to add to this about math? Yes. Um, in eighth grade, Mrs. Fortino and the other eighth grade math prime classes, on Friday, we're going to be starting a project on real life budgeting. 
since it was a review with integers and order of operations, Friday, they're going to actually choose a profession. So we're going, they're going to have a list of professions. Um, so they get to choose what they want to do. And then from there, over the next three months, they're going to be budgeting. So along with their profession, they get to choose where they want to live. Um, they're going to choose their, their monthly utilities, their food shopping, their payday, their car payment, and each month they're going to go through it. And so they'll, they're going to be adding and subtracting integers, but tying it into real life. That's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. No, you know, that's great to learn this so early mm -hmm. on in Absolutely. life, right? Yes. Okay. Um, lastly, I just want to, um, attention for the eighth grade parents. Um, the team leaders, Ms. Mako and Ms. Kelly, they're doing the class of 2022 apparel sale. And I would like to show this. Let's see. Can you see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let me go back. So every year they have um, this really great t-shirt that they usually wear on the trip. Hopefully we'll have the trip in the spring. And it's a Woodrow Wilton Challenger t-shirt. And if you see, all of your kids' names will be on the back of that. So they already have printed class of 22, 2022, and your child's name is on there as you know the official class that will be graduating next year. And there's directions on how to order and if you go to your child's social studies Google Classroom, that's where you'll be doing all the ordering. You'll be doing it right on a form. And there's a link for this. Okay. And it tells you everything, how to order it right there, your full name, you select the size, and then you continue to check out. Okay. And then you put the payment information there. So ask your child about it because. Um, they all receive the information. We just wanted to make sure that all the parents receive this information. If your child forgot to tell you, you should, you know, when they want to get this done, you should have it in about a month or so. So it's important to order it now. Get it in as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Caprizno. On, on the class of 22 apparel, is there um, a hard deadline date right now? That so parents they, should have their orders in? They're trying to get it done as soon as possible. I can let you know that and maybe we can put it in the Monday Minders or whatever. Mm -hmm. That would be a great idea. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Yeah, because I know they really would like to get this done as soon as possible. Okay. You know what I mean? And, and to put the order in. Okay. Yes. I'll actually text them right now and see. Okay. While you're going on with the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm actually going to share my screen. Actually, it's not working really well. Okay. Not great. Okay. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Um, so, yes, the next item on our agenda is the Board of Education um, update, but I actually, unfortunately, was not able to get a Board of Education rep. So, hopefully, in the next meeting, we can have like a, a representative come in and just let's talk about like with some of the update things that they've been uh, working on. Okay, uh, now the officer's report. Um, yes, yeah, so back in August before um, school started, we actually, we, the, uh, the schools in the township actually got together with the other presidents and we usually have meetings with the um, superintendent to kind of just like talk about like the items, you know, that we can bring back to the schools and to talk about to the parents. Um, last time's uh, meeting was kind of focusing on the new food vendor and uh, some of the things that they're actually going to be bring on like uh, and also putting on you know like the safety labels and and whatnot and to show the parents what the your children are eating and also just trying to get a feel to just you know for like a menu items and, and things like that but that was like the primary focus so they have vendor the food vendors actually were there and they gave us a, a presentation on that um and then the okay so then the second thing is the, the fundraisers. So 
at um, Woodrow Wilson, we don't really have memberships. We actually just, you know, we actually just collect donations from parents. Um, and, you know, and usually the recommended donation there is $10. Um, but like I said, but anything is, is definitely very welcome. Um, if you have any, you know, if you'd like more information on that, please feel free to like reach out to me or any of the uh, board members on that. Uh, so we also have a candy sale coming up for the greatest, uh, the world's greatest candy. That's actually the students will be coming home with a box of candy if they want to participate uh, and, you know, selling them at home. And then, um, but I, I don't know if, I don't think so. No, actually the last time we did a candy sale of this type, the, actually it was the eighth graders. And like I said, they, it's basically, we're also going to be getting the vendor coming in and he'll speak to, the, you know, about uh, the actual like candy and, you know, uh, selling and, and things like that on October 7th. And the sale will be running from October 7th to October 30th. Um, we also have gray and navy blue masks and lanterns for sale. Uh, if you were the, there at the sixth grade orientation, we were able to actually you'd be able to see the masks that we have for sale. But if anybody's interested, we still have some masks for sale at $5 a piece. Um, so then next the PTA meetings. So as part of the PTA, we have a total of five for the school year. Uh, so the remaining meetings this year will be on November 9th, January 4th, March 1st, and October 12th right now. And right now, I think, I think it really like, you know, like Mrs. Levin does, I think we have the virtual meetings are working, I think really well. I mean, you know, we definitely get more participation. I, you know, it's actually just, it's easier. Um, and, you know, again, and we have recordings. So if anybody's like interested in, you know, and, and listening into it later on at a different time at their convenience, I think virtual is actually working out really well. So I think in the meantime, we're just going to continue the virtual PTA meetings. Um, okay, so then, and again, and like, like we did today, the Zoom link will be included in the Monday Minders as part, you know, as the way to join the meetings. Okay, so then, uh, Girish, are you here? I see him. I think I see. I saw him coming. Uh, yes. Okay. Hi. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for the background noise from outside, but um, yes. Yeah. No. Um, with regard to the scholastic book fair, uh, so we plan to have it uh, this year in December. We're still trying to figure out whether to do this virtual or in person. Uh, in person, of course, it's much better. You know, the kids can see the books um, and uh, decide what to buy. Um, uh, we'll have to discuss with Mr. Parent, uh, you know, how it could work out uh, in person. Uh, but uh, that's definitely that is scheduled for early December. Yes. Okay. And then, I know you're also part of the safety committee. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, we have had one meeting, Ms. Parent, uh, or maybe it was cancelled. I'm not sure. I don't think I attended it. Meeting this year, uh, this academic year. So they haven't had their first meeting yet. Um, it's scheduled, I think, uh, for next week. But I can check with Mr. Zacchino. He's our assistant principal. Uh, the safety meetings uh, are held typically every other month, and they have a parent representative on them, as well as staff members, our nurse, our anti-bullying specialist, our uh, facility manager. And it's to discuss the safety and wellness of our school community. So the people who attend the safety meetings are able to um, raise any concerns or questions that they have. Um, typically, uh, the meetings are held in the morning, uh, like I said, every other month. Um, so once those meetings start to occur, uh, Mr. Warrior will be able to give a report at the PTA meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Girish. And the only other thing I think, uh, I know Girish is, is on a business meeting today, so it, it's actually a little hard for me. I know it's also hard for him. I, I actually really appreciate you joining, but uh, we also have some dine outs that we plan on having. Um, and again, we'll have more information on that as, as we get yeah, as it come, uh, in the future. Okay, and then uh, our vice president, I don't think Ming is able to join tonight, um, but her and our treasurer, Sophia Lerman, are the co-chairs of the eighth grade dance. For the uh, parents who are interested in um, helping at the eighth grade dance, uh, right now it's scheduled for June 10th. 
Um, they are the co-chairs. And as you know, more information comes out, I know we're, it's still a little early, so we're a little far out, but as more information, um, we get more information, we'll definitely get that out to all of the parents. But if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or, you know, on our email and, and I'll definitely forward it over to them. Um, okay. So the, so the next thing on the agenda are the assemblies. Uh, we do have one pending uh, right now, the, you know, but again, it's right now pending. I think we're just kind of waiting information on how that's going to happen basically. Cause you know, it, due to the COVID pandemic, it, it's still kind of a, you know, it's, we're not, you know, we don't really have that much information and it's really difficult to just kind of like plan. But again, we do have one pending as Mrs. Levins can um, probably add to that. But again, more information on that to come, depending on how things work out. Um, okay, then the A, we do have the, uh, definitely like something that we do have is the eighth grade student of the month breakfasts for the eighth graders that are, you know, are, are nominated by the teachers. Um, and we honor them at this breakfast. Uh, I guess this year, the breakfasts are scheduled for, the first one will be on October 21st, November 16th, December 20th, February 17th and March 24th. Um, and again, was we get more information, your student will you'll come home and they'll give you basically more information on when these things will happen. Um, we also have coffee chats that uh, we have planned. And you know, these are, we invite parents to discuss different topics. Um, usually they're done in the mornings, the same days as the student of the month. So again, this year's will be October 21st, November 16th, December 20th, February 17th, and March 24th. Um, Mrs. Levins, I'm not sure if we have a, a speaker or whatnot or uh, for this year scheduled yet. So what we typically like to do with our coffee chats, this started about two years ago. When we started and we were in person, last year we held them virtual. Um, and we started them because the PTA um, came forward and said that they wanted a way to connect more parents to the school community. So we have the meetings at night, which all of you are a part of uh, this evening, but um, I guess um, a concern was raised that parents who maybe work in the evening don't have a way to participate during the day. So that's why the coffee chats are at 10 a.m. So that parents have a way to kind of be involved with the school community either at night or during the day. Uh, they follow the student of the month breakfast. So the student of the month breakfast, typically we have anywhere between 18 and 20 eighth graders being honored. So those parents are asked to stay with us. And we have different speakers that come in on different topics of importance. Uh, last year, we focused a lot on uh, social emotional learning. We focused a lot on how to support our students with remote learning at home and how to communicate and practice um, practices with them as they were virtually learning. Uh, this year, uh, we'll probably focus on some um, topics surrounding our vision statement, uh, having discussions about how we can better live up to that at Woodrow Wilson. So the conversations will center around those bold words that you see in our vision statements and the topics and speakers that are chosen will all have um, a focus on one of those areas, whether it's equality, diversity, um, you know, uh, learning to their highest potential, et cetera. But more information will follow uh, in the Monday Minders as we get closer to the coffee chats. Thank you again, Mrs. Levins. I have to say those Monday minders are really good. I actually, just out of habit, I actually look forward to them because it's really good for uh, updates and just to really stay in touch with the school. Yeah, for those of you who don't know what Monday minders are, we, we I, I'm a parent of two girls, 10 and six, and I get hit with a million emails as well from school and, you know, swimming and theater and softball and whatever, and I can't keep track. So what we decided to do last year when everyone was virtual is to consolidate our communications so that we are sending one important email out a week and that's Monday Minders. We send it to staff, students, parents, everybody. So everyone can be on the same page. We try to only send one important email a week. Of course, things pop up in our emergencies. So we have to send out some others, um, but really look for the Monday Minders. Tell your kids to read it. I know they don't like checking email. Mine doesn't check email either, but all the information they need in there 
Um, you know, if they want a t-shirt, if they want to join a club, if they want to be part of something is always in there. So read it, read it with your kids, encourage them to read it. Um, it will come out every Monday from Karen Hoops. She's our secretary in the main office who handles our communication uh, through Blackboard. So uh, she's a real person and that's the email address you'll see attached to the Monday Minders. Uh, Ms. Caprigione, I think you have some information you wanna share. I do, I do. So Ms. Mako, the eighth grade team leader, just told me that in fact, last week on the Monday Minders, that's when it was posted, the, um, the eighth grade t-shirt. It's also, she's going to ask Karen Hoops to put it out again next week. Um, so the deadline is October 8th, Friday, October 8th, okay? And also I told you already that you should have come home and stayed with you, but I know how that goes. I don't know who's doing that. Um, <laughs> that it's in Google Classroom in their social studies. And also, uh, let's see what else. That's one of the teachers calling me with her report a little bit too late. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, um, Monday Miners is where it's at. It's also, the form is in eighth grade social studies Google Classrooms. And the safety committee is starting um, Thursday, October 14th with oh, Ms. Great. You know, in the morning, okay? Great, like I said, I think the Monday Miners are great like it's a great source of information it's you know now that you know we've kind of been doing it it's, it's stuff I definitely look for like information I'm like oh let me go look in the Monday they mind just to see if it's in there because it really is just a great source of information and, and like a central repository for like information so like, yeah thank you for that okay so continuing on um the parent university uh I actually participated in that one I think that's a great thing um I mean I know the last time we had done that was it was in person um I think this year is will it be still be in person or is it will it be planned on a, a virtual that's the plan to do everything in person of course we're going to have to uh, manage the size uh, because of, um, we just don't want a crowded space uh, because people don't feel comfortable. Uh, so we uh, will need to pay attention to that. But um, right now, everything in person. Okay. And again, like the parent university, I, like I just as a participant, it was great, like going into the classrooms and it was like you were a student just for, just for one night um, to learn about like different topics and, you know, the teachers presented. So it was actually just a nice uh, you know, like to, that the teachers had presented on a variety of, of topics, um, ranging from, uh, go ahead, Mrs. Do you want to add to something? All I wanted to share was that Phyllis, one of the parents, said, thank you, teachers, for the reports and board members. She needed to leave early. This is a parent. She wrote this in the chat, and she has another high school meeting, but she's interested in helping out with the eighth grade dance and okay. we'll reach out to you guys. Okay, perfect, thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, and again, we have a community service day plan for next year. Um, is that the first one or did we have one last year? The we didn't. Service? Yeah, this is coming out of our vision statement. Yeah. Um, our teachers looked at the vision statement to say, how can we do better? Um, mm -hmm. And one of the areas and lenses that they looked at it was community. Mm -hmm. uh, so they thought if we had a community service day right now, tentatively ske uh, scheduled for Saturday, April 30th, where we could bring together families, kids, uh, their parents, teachers who wanted to help out and do different projects around Woodrow Wilson. So look for more information on that in the spring, but we're going to be reaching out because we're going to need support mm -hmm. in terms of, sure. um, you know, if any of the parents are, are tradesmen or good at gardening or can lead a group of students to paint something, of course, we're probably going to need some supplies, things like that. So we are going to ask our parents or families uh, to help support this, uh, whether with um, supplies, monetary donations, or their presence on that day. Great. Um, actually, which is a nice lead into the next thing about a career day. So if there are parents who are actually, you know, like a tradesmen, or would you like to talk about their, their, their careers, we do have a career day planned sometime in March or April, and a committee will be performing just to have, um, you know, just to give like this, it's for eight, the students, um, just like information and uh, their different careers since, you know, especially since they're preparing to go to high school. 
just to start thinking about like what they'd like to do when they grow up. Um, and again, so the part of the PTA also like we, you know, we, uh, we basically, you know, we ask the teachers if they, you know, if they need anything, you know, we provide grants and, and things like that, you know, we, um, so, you know, that's one of the things we do as part of the PTA. I know we have like, you know, for trees, I know Mrs. Levins had talked about some kind of like trees that we wanted planted around the, around the, um, the school. And, um, and again, just kind of promoting the continuing the local artwork in the area. Okay, I mean, the only other thing I wanted to add is we do have a clothing drive planned for uh, some time in December to, uh, you know, to help with the eighth grade dance. Um, and again, more information on that to come. Uh, our next meeting will be November 9th, again at 7 p.m. Um, and if anybody has any questions on tonight's meeting or any, you know, questions about uh, the school or the being part of the PTA or anything that was brought up today, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I'd be more than happy to, to, to speak to uh, parents, teachers, and students too. Okay, that's all I had for today. Thank you. Uh, are there any, I know we tried to wait till the end of the meeting. Are there any, did anybody's parents have any questions that they'd like to, um, to bring up? Okay. Okay. So if no one else has any other questions. Uh, I, I have a question. Uh, just want to reconfirm um, that we can drop the kids uh, on another lane, which is near to the school. Yes, yeah, so you should have received a map, I think the first week of school, um, listing uh, the side streets that you're available, um, that are available to drop your students off. There was like a Google map attached. I put stars on it um, of those locations. Uh, the best one, which I will send out a blackboard shortly because we had to close it this weekend due to a motor vehicle accident, um, is Woodbury. Woodbury Road um, has a path that leads into our school. And if you come out Woodbury Road, it actually has a light at the end of the street back onto park. So uh, for those parents uh, who are not using um, alternative entrances or drop-off locations, you might wanna consider that. I suggest doing a dry run with your child mm -hmm. so they are aware of where you're dropping them off and where you're picking them up. Um, sometimes middle school kids get confused. Uh, so it would be good if you kind of walked it through with them first. Thank you so much. Thank you're you. welcome. Okay. The Woodbury route was the one where there was a pole down or something, and is that open now? Girish, you're cutting out. Oh, okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, no, I was asking about the Woodbury route was where I think there was a pole down and it was mm -hmm. um, not available for a day or so. Uh, is that cleared up now? Yep. Uh, uh, it w we were waiting for PSE and G to give us the all clear. Unfortunately, there was a motor vehicle accident and a light pole um, was struck. Uh, PSE and G, even though the path was somewhat cleared, they still had to make sure that the wires were not live. So uh, this afternoon they were there, they cleaned up the area again uh, and tested to make sure um, that the wires were dead um, coming from that light pole. So you'll get a blackboard, it's set to go out in a little bit uh, that that path is now open. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, are there any other questions? Going once, going twice. I just wanna thank the teachers that are joining us tonight. It takes a village as everyone knows uh, to support these students and the teachers are giving up their time this evening to join us for the hour virtually. And it's a tremendous help because there sometimes are questions or things came up like our t-shirt order and Ms. Capriglione was able to find that out really quickly. So I appreciate the teachers that uh, contributed to the report, but also the teachers that are present here tonight. 
uh, uh, thank you very, very much. And um, to all the parents as well, um, you know, it, it's important to have community involvement because that's what makes Woodrow Wilson such a great place. And, and you will see that as your students go through our school. Um, middle school sometimes is not the, the best three years of a student's academic career for a lot of different reasons. Um, but our students who go through Woodrow have a different experience and oh. it's one of joy. So hopefully uh, you will see that as well as they continue in person this year. I just wanted to say welcome to all the parents. Um, I've had the blessing of being at Woodrow Wilson for the last 26 years. It feels like only yesterday. And I wanted you to know that as I walk through the halls and the kids are working in groups, although we don't see their smiles because of the masks, you could see their smile in their eyes. Mm -hmm. And it's just so nice to see that we're finally back in school. So you know, we need to keep the faith and keep our kids safe. So thank you all of you for attending tonight. It really means a lot to us. Mm -hmm. And we look thank forward you. to working with you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.